Welcome everyone to this session. Um, today we're, uh, we'll be talking about how we solve exclusive access with role-based access control. Um, my name is Stefania. I'm a product manager here at Databricks working on Unity Catalog and the Databricks Runtime. And with me is Sid. He's also a product manager at Databricks working on IAM and UC. Um, so maybe before we start, like who of you um, has used Databricks before UC? Okay. About thanks. half the room? Yeah, half the room. Okay, um, thanks. Uh, okay, so what is exclusive access? Um, so we talk to many customers and there's uh, examples across many different industries that have very similar characteristics. For example, in the healthcare industries, a lot of our customers work with uh, clinical trials. So data scientists, in this case, like Alice, uh, is working on different trials. She's working on trial one, on trial two. She has access to some other data, um, but she shouldn't be like kind of mix and matching like trial data for like various reasons. Also in the consulting industry, um, some of our customers um, have solutions where they work with data from multiple clients. So a consultant may be working on data of Coca-Cola, but then they're also consulting Pepsi, and of course they shouldn't be able to mix those two data sets while still being able to access it. Then um, in like regulated industries, sometimes there's like restricted da um, data sets, unrestricted data sets, and while users that are working with unrestricted data sets, in some circumstances they should actually be able to also access restricted data, but without mix, uh, matching, um, doing toxic joins across those two. Or in the banking industry, there may be, for example, account data from like bank customers for like various countries, and you shouldn't be able to join them. So those were the kind of like the feedback we got for like this request for like isolating different data sets from each other, and with that also the permission. So it kind of boiled down to, um, based on the example of the healthcare industry, like. Alice should be able to work on multiple trials, but only one at a time. So how was that solved pre-Unity Catalog? So for those of you that were around before we had Unity Catalog, we had what we would call cluster-based permission. So how would Alice access data? This was configured through a cluster. So you could have a cluster with an instance profile that wraps an IAM role or a service principle, and that role was configured to access a certain um, part or like certain data. Um, and then for another cluster, you could configure an instance profile to access other data, in this example, trial two. And Al Alice would gain indirect data, uh, indirect access to that data through can attach on cluster. So she would attach the notebook to cluster one and get access to trial one, she would attach the notebook to cluster two and get access to trial two. So you had a very clean isolation, um, but the access was indirect. Uh, so when we introduced Unity Catalog, we changed that permission model to a user-based permission model where permissions follow the user. So if I have been granted access to something, I can access the data independently of the compute I'm running on. Same for Alice. So if we would model um, the example from before, like Alice would be, we would have like groups for trial one, trial two, group one, and Alice via membership would actually get access to all the data those groups have been granted access to. So with Unity Catalog, like in this example, Alice would have like the union of all the permissions of like the permission she has been granted, um, like personally, or permissions that have been granted to trial one or trial two or group one. So this is, uh, this requirement doesn't go well with like the requirement, uh, or this setup doesn't go well with the use case of exclusive access where we actually don't want Alice to have like the union permission over like all these trials. We only want her to have access to one at a time. So how are we solving that? So we're, access, uh, we're solving that with um, role-based access control. So role-based access control is kind of a big word. Uh, if you ask any AI out there, you'll get like a definition like that. So role-based access control is like a model where to manage permissions. So each role represents a set of permissions, kind of a container, and then user gain access um, to 
those like resources by being assigned to the role. So what is interesting here is like the second part. Uh, in some systems, users can assume roles temporarily um, to gain access to some data and they, they can um, lose those permissions again. And this is exactly what we're going, uh, what we have used to um, uh, realize exclusive access. So what we're introducing is um, exclusive groups. So we, today we have like the regular groups with this union semantics uh, of permission where if you're a member, you basically um, get all the permissions of all the groups you're a member of. Uh, with these new exclusive groups, instead of adding permission to the user, the group replaces a user's permission. So what does that mean? So if Alice is a member of group one and can assume trial one, which is an exclusive group, she either can act as Alice and have like the union of permission of all her permissions and the group permission, or she can act as trial one and only has trial one permission. So trial one replaces the permissions she's been granted. What would that mean? So how would we model the scenario we had before? So trial one and trial two would be modeled as exclusive groups. Um, and then Alice may be member of like some other groups like group one here. So Alice can either um, authorize as herself, then she has her own permissions and all the permissions she's been granted access to, in this case, group one, or she assumes trial one by which she authorizes as trial one group and then she only has trial one group permissions. Then she can assume trial two, then she only gets trial two permission. And with that, we get like a very clean isolation of data access. This is a lot of theory. Now Sid will show you how the product experience will actually look like. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's exciting to see all of this attention after lunch. There's claps already, that's great. <laughs> Hopefully those will continue after the demo. I see a few folks standing in the back. Don't be shy, we have some empty seats in the first three rows. If you all wanna come up while I get the demo set up, please feel free. So Stefania walked you through, it's a very new paradigm we're excited to introduce to a set of features we have in Unity Catalog for fine grained access control. And we can definitely stay back and chat about some of the other ones after the session. But since we're short on time, I'm gonna jump straight into a specific use case. So the demo that we look at is gonna go through four steps. We'll log in as ourselves into the workspace and see what you can access. Then we'll go ahead and see the user switch out to working on trial one, just like the example that Stefania shared. Then we'll switch out as working on trial two. And then we will see how can you get insights powered by Databricks, even when you use other third-party BI tools, such as Tableau. So let's go ahead and jump in. So you see me starting off in a UI that will hopefully feel familiar to everyone in the room. I'm logged into the Databricks workspace as myself. And as I go and start my day, I get to my home folder, and I have pre-created a query. As I go into it, you can see it's a very simple query. Select star from a table in the trial one schema. Pretty straightforward. Now what do you think should happen when I go ahead and run? It should actually fail. And why is that? Because I'm acting as myself. So if I scroll down and I expand the permissions, you will see it correctly complains the user does not have permissions on the schema. Great, so this is what we wanted because you shouldn't be able to get to it as yourself. So let's go ahead and take a look at how the data is organized. You can see I have a trials catalog and then I have a schema and then tables for each month's experiment results. I as the user can look at the metadata because I have the browse privilege in Unity catalog but I can't get to the data as myself. So let's go ahead and reset. I'm now back into the workspace, but I'm gonna go ahead and switch out to working on trial one. And this is a very important foundational step because I've now gone ahead and switched out my permissions to authorizing as this group trial one. This time when I come into the workspace, you can see there's a different folder for me. And this folder maybe has some information related to the trial such as data I may be working with or images. Maybe I have a couple of notebooks that I might be using for my analyses. And then I have the same query that we just tried to run as the user. But this time it succeeds as we expect because we have now switched our authorization context 
to trial one. So it works as expected. And let's say a couple of hours go by, I do some more analyses on trial one, and now it's time for me to go ahead and work on a different clinical trial. So at this point, I'm in the same workspace. I am the same user, but I will go ahead and switch out my context from trial one to trial two. So behind the scenes, my authorization context in Databricks has switched to working on trial two. It's a pretty similar folder structure that you see. Again, a couple of notebooks, a query, but there's a difference. The query this time, when I go ahead and open it, has me working on a similar name table, but for a different schema, trial two. And as I go ahead and run this, it works successfully. But because I'm acting as trial one, sorry, as trial two, if I was to try and query trial one data, it would not succeed. So this is how you're able to go ahead and segregate access. But a lot of you are excited to work with Databricks from other tools, and here you can see me going to Tableau and going through our recommended OAuth powered Databricks sign-in flow. Now when I go ahead and do this, it brings up a web browser, I go ahead and authenticate as myself, and after that, I get presented an option to continue on either as myself as the user or to go ahead and switch out to trial one or two. So let's pick it up from trial two, which is the exact same experience we were in from inside the workspace. So now when I go ahead and come into Tableau, you can see I can get to the same trials catalog, which we looked at from Catalog Explorer a couple of minutes ago. And now I can go ahead and query for trial two schema. And when that comes through from inside Tableau, without needing to go to the Databricks first party UI, I can search for tables that start with trial two. So when I go ahead and run, you see I have similar named tables, and I can now once again get to the same May results table that we were querying through the Databricks UI. So this is how you can see this mechanism goes ahead and lets you have access from either the Databricks UI or third-party UIs of interest. Did that seem interesting? Okay, but I know a lot of you are security focused, so I wanna make sure we cover the auditing piece well. Now there's something new in this audit event. Can someone spot it? There is a run as, and there is a run by. So you can see the run by reflects my username because I was conducting the queries as a user. But look at the run as. There is a trial two and a trial one. So this cements the notion that you're authorizing to Unity Catalog with that specific trial. And now you could conduct all kinds of analyses, such as what are all the things this user accessed, or when access authorization happened, which specific context was used. Now how do we go ahead and set it all up? It's very simple, three steps. First, we go ahead and define these exclusive groups. Earlier in the presentation, you saw Stefani explain how we have regular groups differentiated from exclusive groups. I have a visual on that coming up in a second. Step two, you go ahead and give access to your data to these groups. And step three, you take your users and identity provider groups and give them the ability to assume these new exclusive groups. Let's take a look at each one step by step. Does this UI seem familiar to folks in the room? Yeah, a lot of heads nodding, great. This is inside the account console and I'm working with the groups in my account. But you'll notice at the bottom of the table, I have two new groups, trial one and trial two, and I'm I have those designated for exclusive access. The rest of the tooling is gonna to feel very familiar to you. The next slide is hopefully gonna be even more familiar to you, because you are now giving permissions inside UC, and you see me with three grant statements. The first one grants use catalog on trials to trial one, the exclusive group we defined in the previous step. The second one gives me the ability to now use the schema that corresponds to trial one. And you would have a similar grant statement for trial two if you were writing up those permissions. And the third one gives me the ability to query the table that we queried earlier in the demo. The interesting thing is this entire tooling is exactly the same as you experience with Unity Catalog today. And if you have existing scripts that you're using to manage UC, those will work with no changes because it's just a group for us behind the scenes. The third step is pretty interesting to try and get this working in your enterprise environments. So at the bottom half, you can see perhaps an identity provider configuration that it feels familiar to you. You have users, users are inside IDP groups, and you have gone ahead and onboarded them to Databricks. 
you can use scheme provisioning, or you can go ahead and use automatic identity management if you're in Azure. The part at the top also we just covered in the previous slide, which is these are the schemas, and then these are the exclusive groups that may query them. The middle part is the new piece, where you have this ability to grant can assume to users or groups. Now what's interesting is that the groups that you're giving can assume to can be synchronized from an identity provider. This allows many of you who may be using workflows within your IDPs to add and remove users from IDP groups to be reflected directly in Databricks. So those are the three steps. As you bring it all together, you can define exclusive groups, you can grant access in UC to those exclusive groups, and then you can give permissions to users or IDP groups to assume those exclusive groups. For those of you who have cameras out, yeah, please go ahead and scan that QR code. It'll take you straight to our preview form where you can go ahead and let us know if you'd like to be on this preview. And with that, Stefani and I will open it up for questions.